it's so comfortable it's so soft Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Love of Fivers. I'm Liz and on this channel, I talk about all things knitting. In today's podcast, I am going to be sharing all about my new cast on, my current whips, some acquisitions, and also some future plans. Let's start with finished objects. I am wearing my sweater number 14 v-neck from my favorite things knitwear. And this is a beautiful drop shoulder oversize very long sleeve sweater and it's a very easy construction the pattern is well detailed and very easy to follow it knits up super quick it is recommended to be knit up on a six millimeter needle of course that's depending on your gauge i believe the gauge for this is 16 stitches per 21 rows and you use three needles so you you use a six millimeter for the body five for the cuffs for the ribbing i'm sorry five millimeter for the ribbing so you're ribbing on your cuffs and on your hem and then for your collar you use a 4.5 millimeter needle so you're using three needles and i'm a gauge so i use the exact needles recommended and the yarn weight that she uses on the pattern it's like a fingering hold and holding two strands of lace I didn't do that. I did a worsted and a lace, and that worked out great for me. I met Gage. It's still very airy, very flowy. It drapes really nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful sweater. I loved it overall. I would totally knit this up again. And as far as modifications, I follow the pattern exactly as it was written. The only thing that I did was I decreased my sleeves because I always do that in all the patterns. My arms aren't that long. And even though I love my, you see, you can see that I still have, it sits like, of course, my arm is bent. But when I'm you know, standing, it's like right here on my knuckles, which is perfect. That, that's, that's what I love. The recommended length was 30 centimeters. And then you have 14 centimeters on the actual ribbing, which I love. So it actually, the pattern tells you if you want to modify the length of the sleeves, you would decrease the, the centimeters on the sleeve, not on the cuff. And then you would do the cuff exactly as it calls for, which I love. I didn't want to modify this because I just love this long ribbing. And this is a two by two on everywhere, on the collar, on the hem, and on the cuff. So basically I, what I did was, this was 30, I believe 30 centimeters on the sleeve. I only took away two centimeters, so I did 28, and then on the cuff, it was 14, and I left it at 14. So the total for me was 42, and the recommended was 44. But I was fine with that, because like I said, I always play with the length of my sleeves, because I know that once I block it, I'm gonna have that, that length that I want. So I ended up getting, I believe, 47 centimeters on the length. So I got, you know, a good amount i got an extra five centimeters after blocking because the fabric relaxes a lot and also the ribbing itself that two by two you know it, it relaxes as well the length on my sleeves is just gorgeous i love it and that was the only modification that i did everything else stayed to pattern the pattern like i said is well written and it's easy to follow she even includes um a couple of videos for certain techniques in case you need them i didn't have to use them but they're still there and that's great the only video that i would have appreciated if she had a link for was to do a italian bind off on a two by two split hem with a salvage stitch edge so for this for this bind off the reason i for example on the cuff right it's just a straight up italian bind off you can do she recommends that you can do also a pattern bind off so basically you would do you know your two by two bind off so it's simpler and still pretty i didn't want to do that i wanted to do the italian bind off so what i had to do was i researched and researched until finally i found like a couple of videos that that worked out for me so basically for a two by two bind off there's really no two by two you have to rearrange your stitches in the one by one setup so i had to set that up first and then you can do the bind off so this was you know this was straight and easy once i organized my stitches for the hem it was a little bit more that i had to research because 
not only do you have to rearrange your stitches doing a one by one, but also you have to think about how you're going to start that bind off because it's a split hem and not only a split hem, but you have a salvage stitch edge that you want it to be nice and neat and kind of rounded, you know, nicely on that edge. So it was like, you know, a, a mix of things. So I just kind of did a lot of research and I found a couple of videos and I used different videos to to help me do that and it was my first time doing it and i was able to do it it was pretty simple and easy and straightforward so if you go ahead and do that instead of your um you know in pattern bind off you should be fine with the resources that are there online if you guys want you know what i use i can kind of go back to my notes and see what i use and i can you know drop it in the in the description below so just leave a comment if you guys want those videos I can add them and I can even add those links to my Ravelry project so that way you guys have them there attached to the project. So just let me know in the comments below if that's something that you want. So so that was the only thing with, you know, with that, that I was like, oh, I wish there was a video for that because then I, it would have saved me the time to research and to try to figure it out. But it wasn't, you know, it wasn't something like difficult that you couldn't do on your own. So I went ahead and did that. And I'm happy with the results. The only thing that I don't like about the rearranging on the on the two by two rearranging to one by one is that, you know, you have to be very careful and pay attention because one of the stitches, because you're rearranging, you're pulling on one, right? On one of the knitted stitches, you're kind of pulling. And so when you do that bind off, it's it, it kind of looks a little weird, like pointing to the left like it's angled to the left. Um, and I've zoomed in to many other knitters that have done this and everybody seems to have the same issue. So it's just the way it is. Um, you know, it's not, you can kind of like, some are more visible than others. Like I try to take my time and fix it and like arrange it really nicely after I, you know, as I went binding off. So it wouldn't be as bad. So like you can tell here, I don't think it's that, you know, I don't know if you, let me see if I can show you on my, on here, you see? So it, it only leans like a little bit. It's not even that serious. You see it? So that's the only thing when you rearrange them, you know, but it's still not bad. Look, here's cause I'm pulling, you know, sideways, but look here, you know? So it's not bad. It looks good. And like I said, this was my first time doing it. And I think I did a pretty good job um, doing the bind off, you know, with rearranging the stitches. So, and like I said, this is so beautiful. You see, and it's nice because it creates like a really nice seamless round edge. So I like that. So that's why I wanted to do that. And also on the, um, on the split hem, you know, the bottom hem, you get that beautiful kind of like rounded edge as well. So I think it's worth it to do the research and kind of do, you know, the the Italian bind off versus the in pattern. But you, like I said, the pattern, the in pattern, some people have done it and it's also very pretty. So it's, it's just a preference, you know, matter of preference. So this was a great project and needed a super quick. I love it. I met all the dimensions for the pre-blocking and the after blocking was perfect for me. So pre-blocking, I had 10 inches here. I believe 10 inches or 10 and a half. And after blocking, I got 12. So it was perfect because I love that. I wanted that nice, you know, oversized feel. I can, I've worn it already a few times and I love it so much. It's so comfortable. It's so soft. The combination that I did is beautiful. I used... Um, the patents, uh, what is it called? Um, patents wool classic, uh, worsted. And I used that I had in my stash, um, the Lang Lace Mole here. That Lang Lace, you guys, is amazing. It is so soft, so beautiful, knits up so nicely. It doesn't shed, which is such a great thing. And, you know, once everything blocks, it just, everything is beautiful and soft. And it has a nice halo, but it's not too much. So it's it's really beautiful. And I actually, you know, that that lace yarn is pretty expensive. I think it's like $25, a tiny little ball, 
of 25 grams. I think it gives you like 310 meters, I want to say. And I ended up getting that on clearance when I went to the New Jersey Wool Walk for $5. So I kind of like, you know, made out really well. And so I had it in my stash and I just paired it with this yarn. You know, it created a really beautiful fabric. So I'm really happy with the end results. I would definitely recommend this pattern. I would totally make this again because I think this is such a classic piece to have in your wardrobe and you can do so much. You can wear it like this, like I have it with a little camisole. You can have it with like a button down collared shirt. You can throw it over a, a cute little dress. I mean, you know, it's like endless and it's so cozy and nice and drapey and flowy and I love it. So definitely this is an amazing pattern and I would say if you want to go ahead and knit it go ahead you're not going to regret it and it's not difficult at all the only thing is that i also noticed is that it wasn't a big deal for me but usually other designers when they have this type of construction which is a drop shoulder and you start in the back you know you cast on and you start working the back increases and then you come around to pick up for each shoulder usually when you cast on and you kind of mark with stitch markers um, usually like here at the collar so you know from what point to the right and what point to the left you you know you, the distance to pick up so that way you have an even amount here at your collar this one doesn't have it but it's not that difficult because you know you you can just kind of it tells you the amount of stitches that you have to pick up and you can count from you know from the end to the neck on both sides that way it's even and then you know you have a nice even amount on the collar so that was the only thing but overall like i said a great pattern and i found it easy to follow and the construction was beautiful and the final garment is fantastic i love it and as you guys know always on my ravelry page i'll you know i add all the information the the yarn that i use how much yardage i use everything is on there and i also link it on the description below if you guys need it but if you guys have any questions, like I said, regarding this specific um, pattern, just let me know. Also, if you need, you know, the videos to help you with the, with the split hem, also let me know in the comments below and I will go ahead and add them to the project and also to the description below. Okay, the next kind of like half finished project and half whip situation that I have going on is my pressed flowers socks and this is by savory knitting which her name is amy christophers but she goes by savory knitting on ravelry and on instagram and if you guys you probably are aware of the pressed flower collection which is gorgeous there's a hat there's socks there's a shawl there's a cardigan i mean it's all of it it's beautiful i'm obsessed with it so basically here it is and the reason i said it's a uh, kind of like a half finished and half not finished is because I finished one sock and I was so excited that I went ahead and blocked it and everything because I just wanted to see how it would block and also how it would fit. So the other one I have to cast on the second, you know, the second pair. So let me talk about this beautiful, beautiful pattern. This sock, you guys, fits so nicely. It's a snug fit because of the mosaic flowers, you know, the pattern, the mosaic pattern. It creates a really nice snug fit, but at the same time, it's stretchy. So it just fits really nicely. It is knitted on a 2.5 and a 2.0 uh, millimeter needle. So you do the, the, like the cuff and the heel and the toes are on that 2.0 and then the the actual leg you know on the foot is on the 2.5 this is a top down sock and with an afterthought heel so mosaic knitting and afterthought heel are two skills that were new to me so I'm, i was excited to try this and this mosaic knitting, it only looks complicated, you guys. It's really simple. And once you get the that pattern sequence, you're golden. Like, you're pretty much repeating that. And you're going to repeat as much as you need, like, as far as how long you want the leg, you know, how long do you need the foot to be? You're going to continue to repeat that sequence. So it's pretty straightforward. 
and the decreases on the the decreases on the let me see if i can show you the decreases on the toes are just gorgeous 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 i love them look how beautiful that looks and also the heel is so pretty i love the heel so let's talk about this afterthought heel I, like I said, it was my first time. I had never done this and it was pretty interesting. So the only thing that I found challenging was when I had to do the afterthought here, right? When I had to put the lifeline in because you're doing the light and then you kind of have to figure out by, I mean, I was able to try it on. So I, at least because I was doing it for myself, it was good. And then you have to kind of like figure out where you need to put the lifeline according to your leg. And then also for your, um, you know, for your foot and stuff, how, you know, you need to figure all that out. So that was like the only thing that I found a little challenging, but I managed. And then for my second one, I took notes as far as how many repeats I did. So that way I can match my second pair so I can put my lifeline in. So the way you work your afterthought heel is that once you finish your entire sock, you come back to this piece where you have your lifeline and you pretty much are unpicking that lifeline and putting in your your needle and you have to be careful because you're actually you have to put a needle in this side and on this side right to then have both live stitches on your needles and be able to create the heel so basically you're knitting in the round the heel right and you're doing decreases on the side right like a knit to get a knit to together or slip slip knit to create these these de decreases and then at the end, when you end with the amount of stitches recommended, you're going to then, you know, leave a nice long strand and cut your yarn so you can then kitchener stitch the heel. And at the beginning, I was worried about that. I was like, oh my God, I hope that I don't feel that on my, on my you know, on the, on the heel because I will be uncomfortable. But luckily, you don't feel it. So it's great. And it's, it's just such a nice clean heel it's like so beautiful and i would totally use this technique again i think the more you do this heel the more comfortable you become as far as knowing you know the exact time where you need to stop to put your lifeline for that heel because again you know you're trying to to make sure that the heel sits exactly where it needs to sit this pattern is beautiful and i cannot wait to make the second one I blocked it and everything because when you do mosaic knitting, the yarn is like scrunched up and I wanted to see, you know, how it would open up and how it would sit. So I went ahead and blocked it. And you guys, I put this sock on and it's so beautiful and so gorgeous. I love it. And I'll put pictures so you guys can see me with the, the sock on in, in a little video. It's just beautiful, beautiful. And I cannot wait to make the second one. I own the shawl for this and I, oh my God, I wanna make this shawl. And obviously for the shawl, I'm gonna pick like more of a neutral palette for that. But this I thought for the socks would be so fun to do these colors. And also the other thing I wanna say is that the, you can make, this is all fingering by the way, and you need like 250 yards for the, like for your main color in 150 for your flowers. So with, you know, with those two skeins of fingering, which usually you get like 400 to 400 and I don't know, 30 yards, you can totally make two pairs. So you would make two sets and all you, you would do obviously is alternate the colors because one you would have, for example, on the gray, on the other sock, you would do gray flowers, pink socks, you know, because you would have more of the pink, but you can make two sets with that, with those two um, skeins of fingering, which I think is so fun and so great. And this is a highly recommended pattern. Even if you're a beginner knitter, um, it's it's so much fun, this mosaic pattern. I love it. Obviously, if you've never done a sock, then go do a vanilla sock first because that way you can learn the construction of a sock. But if you're a sock knitter, definitely go for this. This is such a beautiful and fun sock and you'll learn like i said how to do an afterthought heel and also how to do this mosaic um uh, knitting you know pattern which is beautiful you guys i love it so much so yeah so this is like half finished and half that whip because i have to cast on the second one but definitely so worth it my next whip is the berlin scarf this is by this pattern is by Suzanne mueller 
and she goes by Paula Strict on Ravelry and also on Instagram. She has beautiful things. I love a lot of her stuff. And when I saw this scarf, I right away saved it, bought the pattern. I wanted to make it. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous, oversized, very, very long scarf. And it has like these beautiful fringes at each end. So this scarf, like I said, I had it on my to be knitted list. And it coincided that Amy from NE Knits and Originally Lovely were hosting a knit along for, um, it's called the Fluffy Scarf Knit Along. And I was like, oh, I could totally join with my Berlin scarf. So I cast it on and I joined the knit along. It's a month long. It started like mid-February. It ends next, the end of next week, March 16th, I believe. And so... It's been fun to see everybody's uh, scarves. A lot of people are doing the Berlin scarf. That's so interesting. But anyway, I didn't, I wanted to make this in the yarn that's recommended, but I didn't have time to like go and order and get it delivered. So I just kind of went through my stash and I picked whatever I had that I liked and that I made gauge with. And so I think it's coming out super pretty. And this pattern, it's pretty mindless knitting. It's all stockinette in the round. And it's a tube. You see, it's just a tube. So it's it's a nice, you know, when you want to watch TV or just kind of take with you anywhere, it's just mindless knitting. And basically, you start with a provisional cast on. So that's why I have like this other color yarn here. Because you want to keep these live stitches because here you're going to cast on. You're going to do, um, you're going to pick up these stitches. And this is what you're going to use to do your, your fringe cords. And they're done by double knitting. And basically this is a really, really long scarf. I believe it's like 78 inches long, which is about 200 centimeters. So it's pretty long. And it's pretty fluffy and thick. So this is definitely going to be warm. And also the, for the, this is, you use bulky weight for this pattern. And so the recommended needles are a seven millimeter in a six millimeter. So you do the fringes on the six and the body on the seven. I ended up doing, because I didn't use the, the yarn called for, I kind of just looked through my stash to see what I had. I ended up meeting gauge with a six millimeter needle. So I am using six millimeter for, for the body of the scarf. And then for my fringe, I'm going to use probably like a 5 or a 5.5, depending. I'm going to see, you know, when I, I will do one and see if I like it on the 5 or on the 5.5. I love it. It's, um, you know, it's a lot of knitting, but it's mindless knitting. And I don't know how much more I'm going to get from here to next week, but I don't think I'm going to finish it, but I'll continue it anyway. And I cannot wait to, you know, finish it and block it and just kind of see this yarn you know, in its final stage. I have worked with this yarn before and it's beautiful and it's super soft and doesn't itch or anything. So I'm excited. And this, like I said, I had in my stash. I am using, this is the yarn here. It's such a beautiful color. This is a, it's a blend. It's 35 wool, 35 alpaca. And I want to say, wait, no, it's a 35, 35 wool, 35 something like that it's a it's like it's wool and alpaca and then it has some nylon and then so i'm doing this double right and then i added it's falling apart but i added this little bit of um i had also a this is a merino a superwash merino and i kind of put all these three strands together and i was able to make gauge and that is why you see that it's creating a little bit of like a melange kind of fabric, which is kind of cool and I like it. And it's because the, let me see, it's because the merino is a little lighter. You see, the merino is a little lighter than the, and those are the little bright stitches that you see, than the, than this, the Paca wool blend. So this is a really nice scarf to have for winter because it's really long, it's it's really thick, it's really warm. So you're able to wrap it around yourself a few times, cover your face, you know? So it's gonna be, I think for us that are up north, I know Amy is in Boston, I'm in New Jersey. This comes in, she's also knitting it. 
but she's using the originally lovely yarn which is beautiful and i wanted to get it but you know by the time it would get here and all that i just wanted to cast on so like i said that's why i went through my stash to see what i had but this is creating still a really nice fabric and i think maybe this is a little thicker and um the yarn that she's using is going to be a little bit lighter and airier which is what i think the pattern the yarn that the pattern calls for is also like that it's like a blown yarn so it's a little lighter and that's a really nice feel so eventually i would love to get the yarn and make it in that as well just to have that that beautiful airy kind of flowy fabric so this is the Berlin scarf. It's a great pattern. It's super easy and fun, mindless knitting. If you're looking for something that's mindless knitting, I would recommend this. And like I said, this is for the fluffy scarf knit along with any knits and originally lovely. And if you look up the hashtag, you'll see a lot of people are doing the Berlin scarf in different colors. So it's really pretty. Okay, the next thing is updates on other whips that I that you've seen in other podcasts. I just want to give you like little updates on it. So I have my Musselberg hat, which you guys know that this is a project that I cast it on with no rush, just to have something small and simple that I can kind of have and take along, you know, in the car, in my bag, just, you know, to have something to always knit on whenever I'm out because it's small and doesn't create any bulk in my bag. And so I've been kind of knitting along a little bit here and there whenever I'm out. So, you know, it adds up those two, three little, you know, rounds that you can do while you're anywhere, it adds up. So I just want to show you guys, it's coming out so, so pretty. Look at this. Hold on, I'm dropping this. Look at how pretty the yarn is working up. It's coming out so pretty. I am using my Autumn in New York color from Sorella Yarn Autumn in New York collection, which I love. And it's it this is sock yarn. And so it's fingering. I'm using a three millimeter needle. The Musselberg hat is an any gauge hat. So you can use any yarn you have. And look at this. I'm telling you, this is such a beautiful yarn. Oh my God. I cannot wait to finish this and be able to wear it. And the crown is just gorgeous. I love the crown of this hat. It's so pretty. And I already, so I have here, I believe I have to get to about 18 or 19 inches long. I've knitted up about 10 and a half inches. So I need about, you know, another eight inches. And then I can, you know, cast off the other crown. And then basically this hat is a long tube that it's folded in itself. So it's like double. So I'm excited. That's going to be a nice thick hat too. So it'll be warm for those cold winter months. So, and like I said, this is my little project on the go. So no rush. I knit a little bit here and there. Probably have to use this next winter season, but that's okay. I love it. And I love having something small that I can always take with me and have it in my bag. So this usually stays, you see in this little baggie, this usually stays here in my, you know, it stays in my bag. So whenever I'm out, I always have something to knit on. If I have to wait online for something or if I'm in the car, my husband's driving, I can kind of like knit up a few rounds. So this is no rush, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys a little update that is coming out really nice. And I have about another, you know, eight inches to go before um, binding off on that other crown. So I definitely recommend this pattern. I think it's easy and it's fun and you learn some new skills with the crown. And also, um, and just that construction in itself, that it's a long tube and it's folded in itself. That's really cool. And you can get creative with a pattern like this because I've seen people do like, like half and half, right? So you have two hats in one, which is, I think, super cool. And they've done stripes. They've done a whole bunch of different things. So, and the good thing about it is also it's the fact that it's any gauge. So you can use any yarn that you have in your stash. So I think, you know, it's great overall. And that's why I think this hat is so popular. If you go to the Ravelry page, there's so many projects. It's insane with this hat, but I understand why. I love it. The other project update that I have for you guys is my Salty Day sweater. And this poor sweater, you guys, I tell you, I casted this on at the end of September. And the goal was to, you know, get it done and be done with it because I love this pattern and I wanted to wear the sweater. Well, I cast it on this sweater and then that following week, which was the first week of October, 
I got selected for my first test knit with Kotoba Kika, actually, um, the cinema sweater. And that was due in like three weeks. So I had to like put everything aside and work on that. So the month of October went and then came November and December. I was so sick that I barely knitted anything. Then January came along and I left to Scotland and I was super busy. I had Vogue Knitting Live. I had my Madonna concert. I had like my best friend was coming in for that. I had so much going on. And then February, finally, I was like, okay, let me finally get to this sweater. And, you know, because I didn't have a lot to do in this sweater to finish it. So here it is. This is my Salty Day sweater from Kutoba Kika. And when you guys saw it, I think the last podcast that I talked about the sweater, I think I had most of the body done. I finished the body and the twisted rib also look how pretty. And so the entire body is complete. And then I went ahead, hold on, my yarn is caught up here. And I also picked up for the sleeve. And so now I'm working on the sleeve. So all I have to do is the two sleeves and the collar. And I'm done with this, you guys. And I can like finally, you know, get it off the needles, block it. And maybe get to wear it. The good thing is that I can wear it. This is so airy. And the fabric that I, like the yarn that I picked is so light and airy and flowy. And also, you see how it's like, it's all this beautiful texture and lace. So it's really cool. I'll be able to wear it in spring even, you know, with a little camisole underneath. So I think this is such a beautiful, beautiful pattern. I am so in love with this sweater. I casted this on super excited. One thing led to the other and I never kind of got to finish it, but I finally sat with it. And like I said, I'm excited because the body's done. I picked up for the sleeve. So I don't have much, you know, to work on. And so I should be done with this soon. And I'm excited to get it off the needles and be able to wear it. And all the information as far as the yarn and everything that I've been using and doing, it's in my Ravelry project. As you guys know, I'll link it below as well. If you guys have any questions, again, feel free to leave questions in the comments and I'll answer any questions you might have. This is such a gorgeous pattern, you guys. It's easy to follow. The sweater construction is gorgeous. It is a drop shoulder construction and again you cast on and you start working the back and then you you know when you work the back then you come here and pick up for the shoulders on the left and on the right you join in the round and just kind of keep working on the round obviously following all the charts for the pattern this also is a project that i you know even though i worked it worked up very quickly it's one of those projects that i had to say and follow charts you know which is the case with any charted um, pattern. And so it requires a little bit of more, you know, dedicated time, whereas like, for example, the Berlin scarf or the Musselberg hat, you can kind of just knit wherever it doesn't matter. Um, just like the mosaic knitting, the pressed flower sock, the same thing. It's a little bit of a charted, I mean, once you kind of get it going, you can kind of watch TV and do it at the same time because it's not that intense. But for something like this, I would say you need, you know, to sit down and focus and just kind of like, you know, you don't want to make a mistake and throw the entire pattern off. But you guys, this is beautiful. Look at this. The texture on this is just amazing. I love it so much. And I'm excited because like I said, I don't have much to, you know, to go to finish this. So this, this will be, uh, hopefully in the next podcast, it'll be finished and blocked and I can wear it and you guys can see it. And that'd be so exciting. I'm so excited for this. And this is so fluffy and beautiful. Look at this. It's gorgeous, the fabric that this is creating. Okay, next, I'm going to show you guys my new cast on. And I am so excited about this cast on for many reasons. Because I love the pattern and because I love, 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 love the yarn. So let me just show you. This, you guys, is my Louvre sweater from Petite Knit. This is such a beautiful sweater. This is a raglan construction and you it has short rows in it to raise the back which i love and you do a italian cast on as well this is the first time i do that an italian cast on and it's nice because this is gonna be like this it's like a turtleneck sweater and so by doing the italian cast on you have a beautiful seamless 
you know, rounded edge here. So I love that. And here's the back. So I did all the short rows and the yoke and I split for sleeves. And I have a little bit, you know, I did a little bit after I split for sleeves. And this has gone pretty fast. I love this sweater so much. The construction is easy to follow. The pattern is great. You know, your typical raglan with short, um, short rows to lift the back. So let me talk to you about the yarn that I am using. Look at this beautiful, beautiful yarn and look at this fabric. So I am using my Sorella Yarn Gilmore Girl Collection, I Smell Snow. And I loved that collection. I honestly wanted every single color. It was just beautiful, the work that she did with that collection. And I am a huge Gilmore Girls fan. So when she announced that she was doing that collection, I went insane and I was obsessed with every color. It was just beautiful. I ended up getting three colorways from that collection. And this is one of them, it's called I Smell Snow. And it's beautiful, beautiful. And let me just show you here. Well, let me first, before I even show you this, because it's very hard because this is a situation going here. So basically this is hand dyed yarn. This is my first time knitting with hand dyed yarn. And you know, it's a beautiful variegated yarn. So I needed to alternate skeins to avoid color pooling and also to have a beautiful seamless flow every, you know, between skeins. So I'm using the Helix knitting technique. And so let me just show you. So there's a lot of yarn management that goes with that. And because I'm using not only the fingering, but also two lace added to that, it's even more complex, the yarn management, because you're moving yarns around constantly and you have to try to avoid that all that gets tangled. So this is not a project that I can take anywhere. This is at home and I have this basket. Let me just show you here. So I have this basket. In this basket, I have my I Smell Snow, all three skeins here. And then I have the lace that is like a wool and silk. And then I have a little bit of mohair because I have to switch it out soon. I'll be finished. Okay, this is marzipan. This is kind of like an off-white. And then obviously my I Smell Snow yarn. Look how beautiful the colors. Isn't that pretty? So you have like a kind of like an off-white, a, a pink and a blue, but they're all beautiful pastel colors. So it's just really, really beautiful, the colorway. And with these three, you create, you know, this gorgeous, gorgeous fabric. And it's flowy and drapey and soft and I love it. But I have to, I keep everything in this basket because I have to, you, you know, do this, this entire yarn management situation. So let me explain to you a little bit about Helix Knitting if you've never seen it. So basically it's a spiral, right? So depending on how many skeins you're going to use, you take the total amount of stitches that you have and you divide that by the amount of skeins that you're gonna use. So for example, I am using three for my main color, right? My main yarn. So I divided my total stitches into three. And then basically I take and assign one skein to each piece and I put stitch markers. So I know when, when I have to drop and pick up the next skein. And so basically when I start, I'm knitting, right? When I get to that stitch marker, I drop bolt one, I pick up bolt two, I knit. When I get to that stitch marker, I drop bolt two, I pick up bolt three and I come around. So basically the usually with bolt three, you are gonna knit that piece, but then you're gonna get to the end of the round. And then the beginning of the round, you're gonna knit with that same ball because you need to, you need to get to that bowl number two that is waiting for you. So you're always gonna see the yarn waiting for you and you're just gonna kinda keep on going on a spiral, right? So it creates a beautiful seamless uh, fabric because you don't see any of the joins. And it's amazing what this creates, it's beautiful. Now, because I have the fingering weight plus the two lace is a little bit more complicated for me because I have to make sure that I then, you know, when I'm going to drop, I'm holding my two lace. I drop, I pick up and continue. So it's just more management of the yarn. It, you know, at the beginning, it took some time getting used to. 
And then now it's just like, I'm, you know, flying through it. It's quick for me. Now I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, if I had straight up DK weight yarn, I still had some management, but not that much of, you know, of a concern of like all this tangling because I don't have all this other extra yarn that I'm trying to manage. But this is fingering, and then with the other two lace, it creates kind of like an in-between DK and a light worsted weight yarn, which is what the pattern calls for. And I, you guys, I'm so excited about this sweater. I cannot wait to finish it and wear it. It is beautiful. And I was so excited about this colorway. The colors are just oh so, so pretty. And that's like one of my favorite scenes in Gilmore Girls, you know, when she goes by the window and says, I smell snow and the snow starts falling. She loves snow. I love snow. So I, this was a yarn that I needed to buy and have because I was like, this is just so me right now. The other thing is that when I cast it on, I kept using that skein for the neck, you know, the neck ribbing and also all of my short rows. Then after I finished my short rows that I was going to start my raglan increases, um, I started alternating my skeins. So I just didn't want to start doing that alternating of skeins and all that mess when already short rows for me, I have to like kind of concentrate and, you know, be mindful of that turn and pull really tightly not to have a gap and just like a lot of little things. I didn't want to have to think about the yarn management as well. So I just did my neck and my, and my short rows with one skein and then I started alternating and it worked out fine. There's no pulling. It looks great. And you know, like I said, for hand dyed yarn, I know a lot of people don't do that and you don't have to do that. I, this is my first time working a garment with hand dyed yarn and I wanted to make sure that, you know, it was beautiful and that it was seamless because I love this color. I love the yarn. I really love the pattern. I wanted to have a garment that I was going to be very happy with at the end. So I didn't care if I had to put the extra time. And so I think it's so worth it for me. And I have other hand dyed yarns from, you know, from Sorella that I am definitely going to do the same thing. But anyway, you guys, this is my new cast on and I am so happy with it. I casted this on, I think like February 20th, I think. And I like right away, you know, kind of breeze through it. And it would have been even faster if let's suppose you only had a DK weight, so only one yarn to kind of do and manage. Or if you have like a, you know, a solid, like a tonal that you don't have to think about alternating, this is a pattern that will go by so fast. And it's so beautiful, the construction. The other thing that I want to mention is that I didn't meet gauge with the needles that I called for, the four and the 3.5, because you use two needles. The 3.5 is for the neck, and then the four is for the body and the ribbing. I didn't engage with that, so I am using 4.5 for the body and the ribbing, and then I use four for the for the neck. And then I'm gauge with that. And it turned out beautiful, and I love it, and I am super happy with it. It is so beautiful, you guys. Oh my goodness, like I said, I am so, so happy with this. Look at this, how beautiful. The raglan increases are just gorgeous, everything. And then this is so pretty. How it just, I love this. The Italian cast on is so pretty. And I think this is going to be a really nice sweater for sure. I can't wait to finish it and wash it and use it. The Sorella yarn that I'm using is, the one that I bought is Classic Sock, which is just 100% Merino, Superwash Merino. The Classic Sock for her which is like 400 yards in a hank. And then I'm using the Drops Mohair in Marzipan. And then the other lace, which is um, wool and silk, is this gorgeous um, lace that I brought from Edinburgh. And it's from West Yorkshire Spinners. And um, it's beautiful, you guys. It's wool and silk, and it's really, really pretty. And you get so much yardage in here. Um, I got like eight, 875 yards on 100 grams. So, and it's just beautiful to work with. And so that's a nice like replacement for a lace weight yarn. If you don't want to use like a mohair, you know, sometimes it calls for mohair, but you don't want to use it, but you can use this as the other option for lace weight. And there's other ones too, you know, you can do 100% alpaca and the lace weight. 
um, there's other options as well. So that's my cast on that I did at the end of February and I am like so happy with it and I love it. I love the yarn so much. And this pattern I would totally recommend because it's such a nice, easy construction and it's up very quickly. And I think this is a garment that, you know, you totally want to have in your, in your wardrobe. Like it's super classic. It's kind of like a turtleneck, you know, but like it feels very light and very nice. So definitely I recommend this pattern. So let's talk about acquisitions and some future plans with some of the yarn that I just recently acquired. So let's start with my beautiful Sorella yarn from the Gilmore Girls collection, which I did a little reel of unboxing in case you guys wanna see like all of it, but here I'll show you, um, you know, what I got. And I, you know, it came in this beautiful box. Not all the time you get this beautiful box, it depends how much you order. I had ordered, um, you know, sweater quantity for I Smell Snow, I also have a sweater quantity for Stars Hollow, which is gorgeous, you guys. And I also got um, a sock set and I got two mugs, one for me, one for my daughter. We're huge, you know, fans of the show. So let's get into this beautiful yarn. I have everything, since I'm not using it, I have everything like in the bag. So this is my Star Hollow from the Gilmore Girls collection for Sorella yarn. And also my Emily Gilmore sock set. And this, oh my God, you guys, this yarn is so beautiful. I am like so in love with this. This is my Stars Hollow yarn. It's so, so gorgeous. The colors are beautiful, beautiful. Oh my God, I love it so much. This is, I bought cashmere socks. So this is 80% wool, superwash merino wool, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, and you get 435 yards for 100 grams. And this is just beautiful, you guys. Look at these colors. So you have here like, it's like a beautiful, you know, beige color, cream color. And then you have some brown speckles running through it. And then you also have like some beautiful blues running through it. And I am so in love with this. I cannot wait to, you know, work with this yarn. And it's so soft and squishy. I ended up getting for this, uh, three skeins of fingering and I am going to make with this let me just pull this out so I can show you how pretty look how pretty that is oh my goodness this one has like even more color you see it this one for sure I have to alternate skeins for this one because I don't want color pulling for sure I want a beautiful seamless flow so I cannot wait to cast on with this beautiful yarn. So originally I was thinking of when I bought it, I was making the lentil sweater with this because I've been dying to make that sweater. But my daughter ended up getting the same yarn to make the lentil sweater. So she was like, oh mom, please let me make the lentil. Can you pick something else? So I am going to look for another pattern to use this yarn for. So that's going to be my next thing to look for, you know, what what sweater from my library I want to make with this beautiful, beautiful yarn. I know I want to make, you know, a simple, like everyday sweater. So it can have a drop, you know, a drop shoulder. It can be a raglan. Um, it could be a saddle shoulder, maybe a saddle shoulder. I haven't, I haven't made anything with saddle shoulder. So I need to look through, you know, my sash in my library to see what I want to make with this. But this is gorgeous. Look at this. Oh, I'm so excited about this yarn. So that is my Stars Hollow. And then I ended up buying a sock set. This is called Emily Gilmore. Look how pretty this is, you guys. Oh, my God. I love this. And I am going to make with this the Summer Camp socks and this is by the plucky knitter and guys it's a free pattern and it's such a beautiful pair of socks so the way that i discovered these socks was through marlene knits she posted on instagram her set of socks and i love them and i you know i right away commented and stuff and she posted that they're free and she gave all the information on the pattern and i right away thought of this sock set that i have it would be perfect for it so this is something that i'm excited to cast on and create those beautiful socks and you guys have to go see it's such a beautiful it's um 
they have stripes on top and they're ripped so really really beautiful i am excited to make those socks with this sock set and then the other yarn was my i smell snow which i showed you with my other sweater so that's not in the box anymore so that's what i had those are the three colorways that i you know that i bought from the gilmore girls collection it was such a beautiful collection i wanted like all of them i tell you it was beautiful but at the end i was really happy like i knew for sure that i needed emily gilmore because i love the color and i wanted the ice and snow and i definitely wanted the stars hollow so i was happy and i ended up getting like i said the mug i just realized i didn't bring it so I'll put a picture of the mug. It's so pretty. It has like all different icons that represent the show. So it's really cool. I love it. I have my coffee and my tea in it. It's beautiful. The next one that I ordered was from the, the Greatest Hits collection, which she did. She brought back the best of 2023. So I ended up getting in that collection new spray, which, oh my goodness, I love, 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 love this yarn. It's beautiful. Look at this, how pretty. The colors are gorgeous. And this is inspired by the New York Times. So for the Autumn in New York collection. Oh, so pretty. Look at this, you guys. And I ended up getting classic sock in this one. This is 100% superwash merino wool. It's a two-ply, 400 yards for 100 grams. It's super soft and nice. And this is... It, I know it's like I already knew this was like really beautiful yarn because that's what I smell snow is. I love this yarn. I love this colorway. It's so beautiful. And I ended up getting again, I got um, three. I got three of these. And I'm going to hold it with a lace weight. And I am going to make oh my God, it's so pretty. I also have to alternate skeins here. I am going to, look how pretty, oh, I love this. I am going to make, which I own already, it's the Ollie sweater from Second Knit. And it had some technical like errors, but they were corrected. So I got the update, I updated, and I'm good now to go. And I'm going to make that with this yarn. And I think that's going to be so beautiful because the sample that she's wearing, it's kind of like, you know, a speckled uh a speckled yarn that she used so i think this is gonna work out really nice for that and i just need to get the lace for it and then i'm good and i'm deciding if to do like you know do mohair or do um a surrey so i'll see you know um what i end up getting to to hold with this to cast on the Ali sweater but I, I cannot wait to make that sweater because it looks so pretty and I love it. And I love that it has a two by two uh, rib, you know, around the collar and on the cuffs and on the, and on the hem. So, and it's a cool um, construction, like the bottom, usually, you know, the bottom is like straight, but it's not, it's kind of like a little curved. So it's interesting. It's cool. So I'm excited to make this with, um, with, with this, with this yarn. The next thing that I got was also from Sorella Yarn, she did the Oopsie sale, like the end of the year, you know, all her extra kind of like, and I think most hand dyers do Oopsie sales, which is like extra yarn they have that they didn't really like, the colors didn't turn out the way they wanted. So they tend to put them in like packages of two or four and sell them for like super discount. So I selected a two pack of variegated yarn and basically it's a surprise, you don't get to pick. So you can give ideas of like maybe like colors that you like and then they, they'll look and, and find something for you. So she sent me this, which I adore. Let me just take this out of here so you guys can see how beautiful this is. And this is an 80-20 and it's so pretty. Look at all these beautiful greens. Oh, I love this. I'm going to make with this a Traveler Cowl by Andrea Renee Knits. It's such a beautiful cowl. That Traveler collection is so beautiful. I love the shawl and also the hoodie. I don't know if you guys seen the hoodie. It's so cute. And the only thing, it's in sport weight, so there's a lot of knitting. But the shawl is really beautiful and the cowl is really nice too. So um, I want to make the cowl in this. Look how beautiful this is. That's going to be a beautiful cowl to make with this. So I'm excited to... Um, 
use this for that. The other thing that I got was just a four pack of mohair. And I just kind of put, you know, if possible to send the same color or similar. So this is it here. And it's so pretty. And let me see. Let me pull this out. Look how pretty, you guys. Oh, my God. And it's so soft, this mohair. So you see, it's so pretty. So it's almost like it's similar, but a little bit different. So, but it, I have some that are a little bit different. Look, this one is different, you see? And then this one's really different, but it's so pretty. Look at this color. You see that? So with this, I don't know yet what I want to make with this, but it's so pretty. So if you guys have any any suggestions or ideas for patterns leave them in the comments below for me i would love to hear your suggestions for you know for this mohair i can you know i can probably get away with putting these maybe these three together right by alternating maybe i can kind of make them look seamless because this would be i think too obvious but these three or just using them individually for something else but anyway, any suggestions will be great. So feel free to leave them in the comments below. So my husband travels a lot for work. And obviously he knows I'm obsessed with yarn and alpaca, you know, for the most part. I told him, keep an eye out. If you see anything, you know, call me or text me or buy it for me. If it's, you know, I'll tell you if it's affordable, if it's worth it or not. Anyway, he ended up going to this market to get like little souvenirs and treat and little things for, for us. Oh, I have to show you guys. Look how beautiful my little alpaca that he got me. I have it here at my desk. It's so pretty. I love it so much. There was this lady selling sweater quantities, already packaged in sweater quantity, 100% alpaca DK weight. And so he, you know, he right away took pictures, sent it to me and, I, and told me the price. I couldn't believe it. So anyway, back and forth, he was like sending me pictures of the color so I could see. So you guys, you're not going to believe this. Unbelievable. So this entire pack was $10. And this is DK weight. And I have 10, 10 bowls here. So like a sort of quantity. This is DK weight. It's 100% alpaca. Sorry for the noise. But... It's so beautiful and so soft. Look how pretty that color is. So I picked this beautiful purple colorway that they have there. I love it. It's so pretty. It's so soft. So it's 50 grams and it has 124 yards. So it's like DK weight. It's so pretty. It's so soft, you guys. I just can't believe that all that yarn for $10. You imagine, you guys, if we have that here? Unbelievable. So yeah, really beautiful. Look how pretty that is. It's just a beautiful, light, airy yarn. It's really pretty. I, you know, I had told them just get it for me because it was such a good price. And the color is so pretty. And I mean, for the price, you can't beat it. I am thinking of making either a sweater or a cardigan with this. Because I think a cardigan will be super pretty in this color. So he got me that one. And then he got me, I told him to get me this beautiful green. I've been wanting some green in my stash and they have so many beautiful colors. Oh my goodness, it was unbelievable. So look at this beautiful green. It's so pretty, right? And again, this is DK Way, 100% alpaca, 124 yards for 50 grams. It's so soft, it's so beautiful. I cannot wait to make something with this. And this is all gonna be either sweaters or cardigans for this for this yarn but unbelievable the price of this this is amazing like you imagine if we had this ten dollars for 100 percent alpaca dk weight sweater quantity unreal so he got me that from the market and the little trinket but also he found because i'm completely obsessed with alpacas he found this kind of like museum slash store right and the museum is beautiful. He did like some videos for me. He's so funny. I'll share the little videos and he took tons of pictures for me. Since he knows I love all of that and I, I was in there with him, he kind of videoed for me so I could see it. And so he went to the museum and it was like this beautiful exhibit all about alpacas and 
he like video a little bit and I'll share that with you guys. And then he also went to the, to the store. And so the store is basically like, it's, it's a shop where they sell the yarn, but also they hold classes like knitting classes. And he took a whole bunch of pictures of all the yarn and weights for me. So I could see guys, the prices were unreal. He only went with a little carry on. So I obviously couldn't tell him to buy me like so much more because he didn't have a lot of room. But at this place, at this store, look how cute the little baggie. So it's all, you know, all natural, the museum, the store, everything. And they had, I had him buy me this. Look how beautiful. This is alpaca and silk. And this is 77% alpaca, 23% silk, 25 grams, 140 meters. It is so, so soft. This color is so gorgeous. I wanted, when he took me to that shelving, they had this in every color. Oh my goodness. I wish he had like a bigger luggage. I would have told him to buy me a few more on different colors. This is so, so pretty. I'm going to make the cumulus blouse with this. So I already know exactly what I'm making with this beautiful color. And I am going to make the V-neck most likely. And he paid like $20 for seven of these. Can you believe that? What a deal. Unbelievable. And he brought me back like all the information for the store and the lady that was there was super nice and sent me like tons of information. They even sent me a coupon because they might deliver to the US. So hmm, that's something to think about. But anyway, I love this and I was so excited with all the yarn that he brought back to me and I really appreciated it and all the video and all the pictures and i'll share all that stuff with you guys so you could see and also my husband will be making a special appearance on my podcast <laughs> so anyway really cool that he videoed and he took pictures of everything since i couldn't be there he gets to travel a lot you know for work and wherever he goes that he knows he might find something that i like he always you know tries to take pictures or calls me or sends me pictures to see if i like it or if i want it so that's really sweet and thoughtful, and I really appreciate it. And I wanted to share with you guys all this gorgeous yarn from Peru. So I'm so excited about all this beautiful yarn that he brought me. Well, hey guys, so it's a little sunburn, but uh, Lova Fibers can be here. So she said that that's fixing her husband, Lova Fibers Spouse Edition. So I am here at Tejed is Cool. And I'm only here because of the wife. <laughs> Look at all the beautiful yarn. She's probably gonna die when she sees this video. Anyway, this is again, Love of Fibers Spouse Edition. So this little shop, it looks like more of a workshop is attached to an alpaca museum, which is free to come in and just look around. I guess it's class homework. Anyway, till next time, Spouse Edition, Level Fibers, I'm out. I love the colors and I am so excited to have this in my stash and see what I make with these. Like I said, this one, I know for sure I'm making the cumulus, but these I I'm not sure yet. I have to look through um, my patterns to see what I want to make. But definitely some cardigans because I don't have any cardigans. This brings us to the end of the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and that you were able to knit along. If you guys don't subscribe yet, I would love for you guys to subscribe. And this way you don't miss any of my future content that I post. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave any questions in the comments below. And as always, I put everything in the description. So just drop down and you'll be able to find everything. All my projects on Ravelry have all the information if you guys need any of that information. Bye. Happy knitting, you guys. See you in the next podcast.